we're going to be talking about uh, that story shortly of uh, Jason Roder. I'm going to be joined by a colleague, uh, that's Lindsay Dendlinger, who's following developments from Cape Town. Of course, uh, Jason Roder's bid to have his murder conviction was overturned in the Supreme, to have it overturned in the Supreme Court of Appeal has failed. The SEA found that the state proved beyond reasonable doubt that uh, he strangled his wife. Uh, Lindsay Dentlinger joining us now. Good afternoon, Lindsay. Can you tell us exactly uh, what else happened in, in court? I understand it was not all bad news for Rhoda. Yes, Dan. The judgment was handed down electronically, so there was no uh, sitting of the court today to hand down that judgment, but the matter was heard in August by a bench of five judges in the Supreme Court of Appeal. Of course, Jason Roder seeking to overturn uh, that murder conviction. He was not successful in that, Dan, but he did manage to get his sentence reduced somewhat, uh, and that was largely based on the fact that the Supreme Court of Appeal found that the Western Cape uh, division of the High Court here um, had erred in finding that he had probably uh, smothered his wife to death with a pillow uh, and had punched her beforehand with uh, his fist, um, uh, his ring bearing fist, uh, as the evidence uh, would suggest. Uh, and the Supreme Court of Appeal said it was rather more likely that he had manually strangled her. Uh, and then, of course, uh, his second um, sentence relates to him uh, trying to stage that murder scene to appear as if his wife had committed suicide uh, by uh, strangling herself with a, um, a hair straightening iron and the court finding that uh, that he was indeed guilty and that the sentence the Western Cape High Court had imposed for that count uh, should stand uh, and so now his sentence reduced from an effective 20 years on both those counts to now around 15 years for both those counts. Yeah and that's like the prescribed minimum uh, sentence for murder. I mean, this case has really been going on uh, uh, for quite some time. And uh, Mr. Roder, I understand he was still on bail. So what do we understand what happens next now after today's judgment? So it has been more than five years since uh, Susan Roder was found dead at the Spear Wine Estate. So you are correct in saying it has been a long time coming. And you're also correct in that Jason Roder was released on bail pending the Supreme Court of Appeal judgment. Uh, we know that he has been living in Plettenberg Bay since he was granted bail, that he had to report to the police station, also inform them if he travels here to Cape Town or Johannesburg or anywhere else uh, for business. We know that uh, he he uh, has a long legacy in the property uh, world and uh, so ostensibly he has still uh, been trying to do business while he is out on bail. Uh, but Dan, given that his murder conviction now stands and he still has to serve a prison, a prison term which the Supreme Court of Appeal has backdated to February the tw uh, 2019, given that he has already served uh, some time behind bars, we understand that he will now have seven days to report to a correctional service services facility failing to do that a warrant for his arrest will be issued and uh, he will be rearrested to serve this term Lindsay Tendlicker, thank you very much for that comprehensive update of this uh, Jason Roder uh, murder case. Of course, the Supreme Court of Appeal today finding that the state has proved beyond reasonable doubt that he strangled his wife Susan at the Spear Wine Estate in 2016. Now he's been uh, sentenced to 15 years. That's the prescribed minimum sentence for murder, a reduction from the earlier 20 years. He's got a week now to hand himself over to jail.